It's that time. You know, we have a lot, but we're gonna get to it. Okay, I'll start the first one. This is a sticker because we're doing a pack. It's an Astro Print sticker. Um, I don't need to talk about it more than that. It's a okay. Sticker. Okay, we got some servos. This is a new um, continuous rotation servo. We've actually carried um, a, a Futaba continuous rotation servo, but we actually like this one a little bit more. It comes with more horns and it's continuous rotation. Can you go to the overhead and I'll just yeah, shut off. Right. It rotates all the way around. So it's good for wheels and it's um, pretty big. So it can, um, I'll put this one away. So it can uh, really drive like a large wheel. We also have micro continuous rotation servos. These are bigger and yeah, it comes with like all the different attachment things like the Futaba one didn't. And so, and also this one's a little bit less expensive because we're buying it direct. And it's got this, um, if you have to adjust it, there's this little hole here. You can adjust the uh, zero point. So it's got everything you'd want from a continuous rotation servo. That's okay. it. Just basically an updated product. Gotta keep moving, gotta keep yeah, moving. Yeah. Tubes. We got tubes. Tubes. <laughs> you All want right. tubes? I got tubes. These are right. tubes for our professional solder sucker from Engineer. And like the very friendly people at Engineer are like, you should carry the tubes. And we're like, fine. So we just got like 100 sets of tubes. I mean, people have been asking for them, so that's good. Um, if the tubes gets melted or damaged, you just cut another piece off and stick it onto your solder sucker. And huzzah, you now have a new fancy solder sucker. Yeah. Oh, quick question. Is that servo metal geared? No, this is a uh, plastic geared servo. Got but it. it's got pretty good torque. So, I mean, like, for a gigantic robot, you probably want to use a, a DC uh, geared, a geared, metal geared DC motor. But this is fine for, like, small robots yeah. that are, like, you know, half a pound or so. Okay. And because we have some Internet of Things stuff going on, Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity, is here. I'm totally okay with all this data. Totally okay. I love this right. data. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the Netduino 3 Wi-Fi wi -Fi is out. This is a monster board. Yes, this, this is, is a lot going this on. This is the Netduino 3, which um, uses the uh, CC3100 th module, I think. Yeah, it uses a 3100 module, which is the, which is the next generation after uh, the 3000, and um, it's a, basically an SPI uh, Wi-Fi module. And um, this is, you know, basically an Arduino. It has that .NET infrastructure. You can program it if you're like a Windows person or Microsoft person. You like um, uh, .NET. This kind of lets you mix the joy of doing Arduino-like things with the joy of .NET. And it has <coughs> Wi-Fi, and I guess there's libraries and stuff to make it pretty easy. There's all that micro SD uh, socket over there, um, power plug, big arm, arm chip in the middle, I guess for the STM processor. Uh, you're rocking out. People like Netduino, we uh, we have the latest. Okay, next up, um, really big, 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 big news. So, uh, real quick, if any of you have one of the big carriers like AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon or Sprint, you know it's a very big challenge to uh, really uh, have good service from them. And also, if you want to do things with electronics, uh, machine to machine, if you just wanted to pick up a, a SIM card and do pay as you go, if you wanted to have a dashboard, a very easy thing to look at, how much data you're using because you're doing all these types of Internet of Things projects, there wasn't a carrier out there. So, big news, Adafruit is now a provider of Ting SIM cards. And Ting is probably one of, uh, and ask around. Anyone who has Ting, they're like, oh my god, it changed my life. So for phone service, just straight up phone service and data for, for all phones, they're great. But um, you can also get a SIM card from them. And we have, <laughs> yeah, and, and this is what we're doing. So we're um, uh, putting the SIM cards in the store. Uh, we have to charge for the SIM cards, and then you have to activate them. But um, just one quick thing I wanted to show before you go into to your thing. This is um, how the dashboard that you can get. And you can look at it in all your different devices. And you can see how much data you're using. Um, it's pay as you go. That they're, they're, the way they're, Go to their website, ting.com, and see how they do stuff. But um, I'll, I'll toss it back to you. Lady Ada, but yes. what are the things that you like about this? Well, this is a true GSM uh, 2G SIM card. So uh, we do have a 3G module that will be coming out in the next few months, but it's going to be much more expensive than 2G. And for a lot of people, if they're in a T-Mobile area and T-Mobile doesn't have any plans to shut down their GSM, and I, I think it'll be around for quite a while. There's millions of devices that use 2G. Um, this is a very inexpensive and easy way to get your phone a project going. So it comes as a big SIM and you can pop out the, you know, you have the standard huge SIM and then like the kind of standard mini SIM, and then there's the micro and the nano SIM. So you can use this with any device that you, I mean, this is a SIM card. You can use this with any device if you have like a, it's something that has the cellular GSM. Um, and you can uh, activate it on their website, very easy, and it, it's pay-as-you-go. 
um, and you don't have a gigantic like monthly thing. It just pay like depending on how much you use, you just pay a little bit more. So it's it's much less expensive, and there's no like crazy maintenance thing. Like one thing that annoyed me about like T-Mobile is they're like you have to give them thirty bucks a month, and with these people there isn't. They just like bill your card, but it's only like six bucks, and yeah. then and here's the other cool thing. Use. If you kind of grew up on the internet like a lot of us did, um, these are the folks uh, who started Two Cows. That's right. So, Do you remember two yeah, cows? They, T-U around. cows. Yeah, not. they've been around for, for a long time. Okay. So anyways, this is this is it. So people have been asking, hey, Adafruit, why don't you carry a SIM that works with um, the Fona? And this is a guaranteed, we actually test each phone out with one of these SIMs. It's this one, Ting number four. Uh, this is what yeah. we use to actually test each phone out so we, we know for a fact that it works and it works really well. It works yep. used as a T-Mobile network, so make sure you have T-Mobile service in your area. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's only for use in the United States. We're only, yeah. our, our zone is only for USA. But if you look at the phone tutorial, we have links to um, suggestions on where to get. You can actually like pick up a SIM card so easily in Europe that I'm not too concerned about Okay, it. next up. Choo choo! All aboard the learning train. So this is something we're working on. This is the Adafruit learning map, and uh, we're playing around with this idea where you would learn based on like a train train map. So this is a uh, Blinky LED Boulevard, uh, Switch and Button Street, Analog Input Alley. Uh, watch out for that one. Uh, Pulse Width Modulator Place, and you can see that you can progress through the map and learn different things. And this is all part of our metro. This is one of our new products, and this is a different one than you saw a couple weeks ago. This is Metro with headers. Mm. And so what's, what's, what's the difference now? We had Metro without headers, which is like basically just a super slim version. Uh, sometimes you don't want headers attached for some reason, like you want it to be super skinny, or you want it to like attach wires to the, the points um, and solder them permanently. But this version um, has headers, and they have surface mount headers. Um, can you show them the overhead? Yeah. And this is an Atmega uh, 328 processor running at 16 megahertz. I'll pick my notes. And I'll zoom in. Uh, it's got the Atmega 328, and it's got an FTDI chip, which I really like, connected to a micro USB port. And then over here, um, here I'll just actually plug this in so I can, can sort of see it walking out. Um, it has a uh, on-off switch even for if you're using DC power, which I don't, I don't have, but uh, you sort of see there's a green LED, but you can turn it on and off if you'd like. There's an on-off switch. You can change the I.O. level from uh, 5 volt to 3 volt which is handy if you're trying to use this. Normally it's five volt logic, but if you want to use it with three volt chips. And all the headers are surface mounted on, and but they're very strong, so you can like attach shields as normal. Um, yeah. Right on top, hold and on. I, and I have. I had uh, like one bent pin, so I have to just adjust for it. But um, just, you know, you make a little shield sandwich, works with all the Adafruit shields. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's super easy to use, it has the, um, the Opti boot bootloader. So if you're using this with the Arduino IDE, just select uh, Uno. Or if you use our board, it shows up as Metro. If our, our board package. Other than that, it's just kind of like the, a very easy, kind of hacker friendly at Mega 328 dev board. Um, I can put the LEDs on the edge because I'm always like trying to peek in. Like if you have the shield on top, like it's hard to see the LEDs. But like now it isn't because the shields are over here. I'm like oh yeah, look, I can see the LEDs. Yay! So, um, let me see if I can find a power switch. You got like so, a bunch. Yeah, here's bunch one. Here. So, for example, yeah, you have a power switch in and then you can turn it off. So, I kind of like that because um, one thing I always miss from electronics is having an on off switch. So, it's kind of one of the things I liked adding. Okay, moving right along. We got more. And it's like so smooth. Metro. Yeah, so here we are. It's this like a metro front. Card. Yeah, there's the back. And uh, we like a lot. Yay. Okay. Uh, next up, the Flora Bluefruit LE. It is here. This is a wearable Bluetooth device. This is one of the few out there that um, anyone's ever made, and we're really happy with it because we have all this stuff that we built in advance, including our iPhone and iPad app. So I'll, okay. uh, I'll, show, I'll show this just to make sure you can see the video. It repeats itself. And then we'll go to the overhead, and you can do a live demo. I'd like to do a live demo. I think I can, I think I can do this you thing. You can handle the live demo? I can do it. OK, we'll do So this is what it looks like. When uh, everything's working out, but then we'll okay. also yeah, but we'll also uh, go, I guess it works out. <laughs> yeah, we'll also get a live demo. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me zoom back out. So here I've got I have a Flora and I have the that Blue Fruit Low Energy, and then I have a NeoPixel connected here. I don't know if you can read, but I can connect to the Flora Blue Fruit, and I'm going to connect in controller mode. And there's a whole bunch of different modes that you can use this in, but controller kind of lets you do like um, data passing back and forth. Come on, pair. All right. 
And then um, I can do stuff like send data from the iPad, like quaternion accelerometer, gyro magnetometer, and location data, uh, like the GPS from within the phone to the flora. So if you want to add like these sensors to your wearable, you can just use the sensor inside your phone and then and then pair it, and then you send the data from the phone. So when you move the phone, it it has that data transfer. But I'm actually just going to go to the color picker, which is the kind of simplest demo. And um, whenever I send, I click, whoa. Oh my god, it's not working. There you go, sorry. I have to click, you have to actually press the send button. That's the secret. Um, the LED matches the color that I'm clicking. So, you know, I can, it, you know, it's basically just a simple demo of, of changing colors. But you can see how, oh, okay, if you want to make um, some sort of interactive wearable project, like, and you want the colors to match something else, instead of having a color sensor, you can just open up your phone and get the color picker out and uh, pick your colors. So that's just the demo. And we have a lot of examples from using this as like a heart rate monitor, like it's a standard Bluetooth type, to just sending data back and forth, to um, the color picker, to a controller, to just like, turning it into an like eye beacon, like all sorts of fun stuff you can do with Bluetooth Energy, and it's super easy to sew on just for um, wires or threads, yeah. and uh, your, your Bluetooth thing is. This is the, definitely, I think, the first sewable Bluetooth low energy device yeah. in the maker market, so that'd be cool. Okay. People Fixed use up. it? Yep. Do something um, fun? Now the, I think this so demo's gone. Now, Bye, demo. Yeah, and I think tonight the, the star of the show besides you and why the code with Flora is uh, we're pleased to announce the next version of Flora is shipping. Wow. Ta-da. It's Flora 2. That's right. So Flora 2 is here. It's, um, I'd say, probably one of the most um, uh, Loved. Well, the, I've seen. Round. I've just seen. Well, I've just seen a ton of projects with it. Uh, we really wanted to focus on wearables um, a couple of years ago to kind of kickstart all the things that were going on that we wanted to see, and uh, we have a couple changes. Uh, the biggest notable one is there's a NeoPixel on it, and the other one is the micro USB. Mm -hmm. um, why uh, is that right? Did I guess? Yeah, there's basically here? two. There's two essential changes that I made. One is we are slowly migrating all of our designs from mini USB to micro USB. Even though micro USB is a little bit more a pain to pick in place, um, you know, we found a good package that we like, and it's really nice and strong. And so we're using. Um, all the new devices were, were moving from mini USB to micro USB because it's kind of it's just becoming a standard. Everyone has micro USB cables. The ki you know the connector's a little bit more durable. So this you know we um, Pro Trinket we did micro USB. Uh, Metro is micro USB, and so we finally got to the point where it's like okay we we've sold through the Floras. It's time to do a revision. So I revised the mini USB jack to a micro USB, and that made it a lot smaller. Um, and it pushed it up, and so there was a lot, there was a big space that wasn't needed anymore because the mini B jack was so big. So I moved all the components up, and that made a little gap that was exactly like NeoPixel sized, right above the button. And I was like, I wonder what I could put here. That's like kind of like in size of a NeoPixel. I have to fill, Mr. Lady Ada, and like we we, we had like meetings, like round tables. Yeah. We had a whiteboard, and we're like, what could we put there that's a kind of like NeoPixel sized? <laughs> and, then, and then eventually we had this brilliant idea that we just put a NeoPixel on there. And so um, we stuck a uh, WS2812S uh, on there um, with a resistor, so you can use it from a wide range of voltage from like 3 volts, and we tested it up to like 7 or 8 volts, and it's just fine because it's a voltage drop through the resistor. And um, yeah, we just got this... Uh, fancy glowy LED that is just using one of the pins that isn't brought out so you pin eight you can connect a NeoPixel so this is really good if you want to have like you want to have some like feedback immediately about your project without having to like sew NeoPixels this gets gets you started really really fast okay congratulations you got through it but but otherwise it's the same size yeah. same code same processor yeah. same speed so same voltage it? same everything but the two big differences are micro USB jack yeah NeoPixel on board okay and that was new products of the night folks Boom.